Welcome back to the Coon Prairie Ramblers. This is the Red Rooster. Here are my two partners here today. I'm filling in for Mel Jackson. And so we're going to be talking about what if we was a TV detective and who would you be? All right. Got you ready for the if bomb. You got to fall first. Okay. Are we ready? Yep. All right, boys and girls, take cover because here she comes. Oh, that was a good one. Have mercy. Oh, well, yeah. What if you had to be one of the TV detectives that's popular? You see, about movies years? too. Let's put the put well, movies. movies. Yeah, why not broaden the horizon a little bit? Kick out the stops. Who would you be and why? But um, but um, no way. But um, but no. no way. <laughs> Inspector Clouseau. <laughs> oh please. No, no. I just want to see if you would get that. Oh, that I used funny. to love it when that. Little uh, sidekick of his little Japanese guy was hiding in the refrigerator, or he'd be hiding up Closet in the ceiling, or wherever. <laughs> Jump out and get him. They'd, they'd tackle him, or or just grab him around the neck and start chucking him down. That's that a pretty, pretty catchy pretty cool, little, uh, pretty catchy little thing. Though, you had to be ready for him at all times. Well, look who who are you going to be? Um, I don't know. Uh, excuse me, just one more question, Colombo. That was just one of his catchphrases. Ah, uh, excuse me, excuse me. Um. <laughs> Just one more question. I like the, the chomping on the cigar there and wearing the, the frumpy old trench coat. People didn't give him a lot of credit, and it did seem kind of on the slow like side. A bumbling, bumbling idiot. detective, but he would he figured out eventually. You know, he'd get yeah, him in the he'd end. Start or walking off, and he'd, oh, uh, come back. What's one more question or whatever? And he he'd question well, that him was the, the death. Hook. That was a hook here. That was a hook. And, and Columbo lasted. I don't know how many years on TV, and then when it was canceled, it came back with it with a few movies or whatever. But uh, they never did. He was supposedly married, but they never did uh, show his wife or, or or say what his wife's name was for some reason. That was that's a trivia question. What was Columbo's wife's name? Well, what was Columbo's first and first name? I don't know what that was. Lieutenant Columbo. His first name was Lieutenant. Must have been. <laughs> I don't know. Well, who would y'all be? I like old Kojak myself. Uh, I thought he was pretty cool. You- a guy, and I know that whenever he first started uh, the series, that he would be smoking a cigarette or sometimes a cigar. But then he started uh, sucking on a lollipop because he had stopped smoking. In real life. In real life. And so whenever you saw him on the show, instead of pulling out a cigar or cigarette, he would pull out a lollipop. But he was just kind of cool the way he moved around. And he reminded uh, you uh, of Mr. Clean. But he was uh, just cool and calm, and you you uh, never would think that uh, the girls would like a guy that, that looked like him, like uh, and bald headed. But it seemed like he, uh, the girls liked him, and he was just very good. It was very entertaining watching him. And I hated whenever he passed away. I and it was just one of the people that we grew up knowing, Kojak. Yeah, his uh, catchphrase was a "Who loves you, baby." That's right. First time I remember seeing him, I know he's around before that, was in The Dirty Dozen. Right. Came out in 65 or 66. That's my first memory. He played this uh, unlikable character named Maggot. It was his name on the on the, uh, the show. That, that was a good movie. That's first. Speaking movie. of that, that's on uh, TMC Thursday night, The Magnificent Seven. So. And they got a that's new movie the, out that's too. That's not The Dirty Dozen. That's it was a ball headed Magnificent guy. Seven. Wasn't dirty, it? dirty dozen is what he was oh, in. Oh, the Dirty Dozen. But okay, I had a ball headed guy. Yul Brenner was in the original. Yeah, but maybe that's now what they're I'll remaking the Magnificent right, Seven. Right, right. Previews look but good. That's on Thursday night, so TMC if you got cable. All, All right. right, who would you be, brother? K-2? Now, if you're talking about detectives, it kind of to me leaves a lot of broad interpretation. Of oh, he's going to be a broad detective. Okay, a female detective. I mean, you got. You've got the private detective. You got Magnum PI, which he wasn't. A, I mean, the first thing that crossed your mind was police detectives, right? But then you start thinking, well, it was also you know just like, the facts, like, ma'am. Yeah, there's other detectives, and then there's nowadays a lot of CSIs and different shows like that that makes you think, well, those I guess basically are detectives too, even though they're doing a totally different thing Forensics. and then also you've got the military people so yeah, the and my mind goes towards who would you be tony denosa which is who he's off of csi i mean not csi 
In CIS? In CIS. And he's the smart, elegant, sarcastic. Uh-huh. And that reminds me of me. Not him. Oh, looking. really? <laughs> I mean, he's a, he's that sarcastic, always got something smart to say, always. You can, you can uh, relate I to can him, I can huh? very well relate to being a smart aleck and getting, he gets, uh, I don't, have you ever watched it? I've only seen it a few times. Oh, you should watch it. And uh, got Mark Harmon as the Mark lead. Harmon always pops him upside the head. And the strange girl with, he always with says the something, pigtails. Or he's always saying something wrong, and he doesn't realize that uh, Mark Harmon's standing right behind him. And he pops him. says the wrong thing at the wrong time, and mm. he's just kind of a good time person. That's kind of the way I kind of see myself as being. But I am a very sarcastic and very smart aleck and say the wrong things at the wrong time. And I don't know that I've been talking about anybody while they're standing right behind my back. Who do we think Mel would be? I think Mel would be a good uh, Inspector Clouseau. If I had to, oh, if I had to pin oh, him in one, I think he'd be a, a good one for that. I think uh, you're about right on that one. There's been a lot of TV detective shows over the years. I oh, used to God. like to watch uh, Mannix. When he a detective, he's just a cop. Well, Mike Connors. He was a detective. He was a detective. Yes, I liked him. I liked Cannon, good too. Show. Cannon was pretty good. Yeah. Cannon, oh, yeah, William yeah. Conrad. <laughs> you would think uh, something like him would catch his man. He'd have to run faster. Uh, what was the one that James Garner played? Rockford Files. Rockford Files, yes. As Daddy well, had the answer there. machine started the show. Yeah. I uh-huh. think about Tony Denoso that uh, I kind of like his... I've told you before that I love flawed characters, people that have faults, and and that's he is a, somewhat of a flawed character. So I, I like that. I, don't, I hate these people that are just they're perfect, perfect no matter what they do. There's nothing wrong. They always have the right thing to say. They they're not human. They don't have hardly any emotions. Or but he's got you know he he's got that. Yeah, and Buddy Epson, he was a detective also, and I can't think of. Uh, Barnaby he, Jones. Barnaby Jones. That's who he had was. his daughter, I believe, working as a sidekick, helping him out. Is that his daughter? I can't remember. That's been a long, long time ago. But there was a lot of them. Once they like a uh, Maverick, you know, and yeah. then the Beverly Hillbillies, and then these guys became detectives. They kind of evolved, yes, into detectives. And well, I guess if you consider all the, like I say, broadening your horizons on there, you could think that uh, Quincy. Was a detective, even though he was a uh, was, medical examiner. He was a. That was a pretty was a good detective. show, actually. It was. It was an interesting show. So I'm guessing if you'd have lived back in the old west, you'd have been a Pinkerton man, huh? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he was that sure. or been Jesse James? <laughs> One or the other. You'd have been uh, running for I can for picture you as from. Jesse James, <laughs> the Jesse James uh, gang. Yeah, the James gang. That's where Dalton was the other day whenever he saved that woman off a rock was there at Robber's Cave. That's for one of the hangouts for Jesse James and them. That's they pretty used to cool. Go to Robber's Cave. He was out there and they were visiting and he climbed up there and he heard a woman hollering and she got up on this like a sheer rock and was trying to climb up it and she couldn't get any further and she couldn't come back down. Oh my goodness. Her husband was exhausted. He couldn't help her, so Dalton climbed out there and grabbed her and wow. pulled her to safety. My hero. <laughs> so am I meant to be for him to move to Oklahoma and well, just was, to save that one woman? Well, it was you the second know. thing he'd actually done a good deed, but no good deed goes unturned, like you said, because right. he got a uh, flat tire and had to walk out for help of the day. How far did he have to walk? Long way. Well, he said on there 15 miles, but I don't think he was 15 miles. Wow. I would say a couple of miles probably. I think 15 miles probably stretching it. Literally. I didn't oh, know I, I had to walk. Well, I couldn't. But. Uh-huh. Did you ever know anyone that was a private eye? I'm sure they've had some around well, Arcadia. Well, if you want to stretch it again and, and consider snitches. Snitches. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, those guys are invaluable, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I knew a guy in Lakeland, and Ken Pulliam, he used to live here in Arcade, but they moved up there, and he became a private eye. But I rode with him. He had cameras, shotgun, 357, uh, uh, movie cameras. I mean, he was loaded uh, for bear, and but he would go, and 
he would uh, investigate different things, and I'd ride with him. Sometimes he'd drop me off on the side of the road and said, I'll be back. He says, too dangerous. You know, it could be some gunfire. And so I'd stand on the side of the road till he got back. And so <laughs> I'd I'd, say, I said, where have we, we ever got shot? Yeah. How long would I be standing there until <laughs> he got back? But yeah. he said he, he loved that. He loved doing that. But he says something different all the time and, you know, and peeking through people's uh, – uh, Windows to film them because when they're supposed to be disabled and he'd had to do stuff like that. That's the big deal right now. I mean, you can get X number of dollars if you're able to. I, I guess it's like a percentage or something. Like I don't know what, but if you're able to prove that somebody is not disabled when they've claimed it, they you know they have people file reports that they were hurt yeah. and they can't do anything, and then they file them up, find them up there on the roof, reshingling their house and. That's I'm right. on top of a ladder to I'll play in pull grapefruits out of a tree. And, especially with a broke neck. You know, the big thing nowadays is they have a lot of uh, women that are a bait date. and they A bait they, date? Yeah, yeah they, 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 they have, dance with you or something. Well, they have women. That, oh, okay. I mean, men that, uh, I see what women you're that suspect their husband is out cheating on them, and they know they hang out every night at XYZ Lounge. Yeah. And so they'll send this pretty girl in there, and she won't just go after him, but she'll like start till she sidles up to him and let him make the first move. Yeah, and he'll say, "Well, come buy your drink." Oh yeah, and then he'll start telling, "Oh, I'm not married," and busted. And they get it all on tape. We're, we're on a break, and then they go yeah. back to the like on woman, friends. and they tell her, "Say, hey, well, your husband tried to Try pick, pick up me this up. woman, hmm. and he was supposed to be at a." conference or something if i was going to uh, a, a pi or whatever i'd be i'm not big in the technology but I'd, I'd try to get into it i would try using those uh, drones you can fly over people's house and see them out in the backyard doing this or jumping on a trampoline or something when they're supposed to be in bed or something <laughs> <laughs> i'd get them with that <laughs> oh they have so much technology now that they used to didn't have they have also those parabolic microphones where you can sit there and listen to a conversation from a Long way off, and that's incredible. That's directional incredible. mics, body mics. That's even they a got so- cameras that they can put into a pack of cigarettes. You know, oh, your ink pens. But- yeah, but there's the danger in it too. Oh, you know, yeah. got a chance of getting killed because some people they'll try to hide what they're doing. You know, some people don't think. Oh, yeah, well, you figure somebody's getting X number of dollars on their. Uh, disability and then all of a sudden you bust them for it yeah that's it well we're gone again what's our frequency brother kenneth 1480 a.m on your radio dial arcadia's news and information radio station